Okay, we're going to be talking about charge interactions. Again, more work with electrostatics. First rule of tar charges is that opposites attract and likes repel. And if you can remember this rule, no matter what we show you, you can solve for anything with electrostatics. So in static electricity, opposites attract. Negatives and positives attract. Objects with like charges repel. Negative repels negative. Positive repels positive. Knowing that will help you solve a lot of problems with statics. So what does this mean with Newton's third law? Now the third law of motion, if you recall, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So let's talk about repulsion forces. When objects repel, this force is the same. They're both being pushed, but the force is going in opposite directions. So it's the same force, just in opposite directions. When we talk about attraction, same force, and again, opposite directions. The positives go into the left and the negatives go into the right. Equal and opposite forces. So the force is the same on both objects. Okay, Just one's going to be a positive force and one's going to be a negative force based on the direction that it's heading. Now let's talk about neutral objects because not everything's going to have a charge. So if something's charged, positive charge let's say and it's with a neutral there will be an attractive force so any charged object okay charged object okay will attract a neutral object okay and we'll talk about why that is it's polarization that's something we'll get to later just understand a charged object a neutral object causes attraction to occur So let's talk about repulsive versus attraction. If we see something that's a repulsive interaction where things repel, okay, means like charges. But if there's a repulsion, that means both objects must be charged. So either they're both positive or they're both negative, okay? If they're both negative, they're going opposite directions. Both positive going opposite directions because like repel. Now, attractive interactions are different. One of them, and this is important, at least one of them may be charged. This could be charged positive, but we don't know about this one. It could be negative or it could be neutral because neutral will attract the charge. So when we see attractive interactions, we always have to account for the neutral charge on one of the objects. So let's take an example here. Um, we got balloons A, B, and C. They're observed and we want to know what their charges are. So we know B is negative. Okay. We know for a fact that if it's a repulsive interaction, then the charges are going to be like. So we know C is definitely negative, okay? Also, the question is, what is A? It attracts to B, so it could be positive. But we know B is negatively charged. A could also be neutral. So A could be neutral or positive. We cannot tell for sure what it is until we can test A against something else. Um. So now let's look here in, in case two. In case two, we know B is negative. Okay. It attracts A. A can either be positive or neutral. Okay. So we can say neutral or positive. We don't know which. But now we look at this second situation. There's repulsive force. Okay. If there's a repulsive force, A has to have a charge. A can either be positive or neutral. Since it's repulsing, it has a charge. It's positive, which means C also is positive. So now we know for a fact A is positive and C is also positive because like charges repel. So we can use some deduction to solve that but just because it attracts does not mean it's an opposite charge until we know all information.